Denise Morrison with me today. She is a good friend and um, we're just going to jam and talk about all things success in real life. Um, Denise, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us how you serve people? Well, hello. I am Denise Morrison, as she said. I'm actually in Norfolk, Virginia, and I am a physical therapist and a transformational health and life coach. So I have been serving tons of women in my field who need some help with self-care, need some time, need some um, empowerment and confidence in and tools to trust themselves so that they can live a joyous, happy, peaceful life. And it's a lot of fun helping them come out of their shell. I love it. I love it. And Denise, when we first met, I told her that um, in high school, I think it was in ninth grade, they made us do, they, we went to the career center and we took paper career tests to find out what we were well suited for, which careers. And uh, one of the ones, and then we had to look them up in books. Um, and one of the ones that I came across was physical therapist. Wow. And um, I found out that in like 1993, a physical therapist could make $40,000 a year and work four days a week. And I was like, <laughs> stop it. I'm in. I am in. Of course, the school that I picked was like a private college that would have been the equivalent of like $90,000 a year or something crazy. Oh, um, but uh, I like sincerely was going for that all the way through high school. I was an honor society officer with the intention of um, going into physical therapy. And then my senior year, I was like, I have zero interest in physical <laughs> therapy. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this. So, um, but uh, there, I've seen, you know, firsthand how um, transformational it can be and how challenging of a career it is too, because people want to heal, but physical therapy and the healing process from a physical standpoint is painful. Yeah. And then here you are helping people from an emotional and transformational process healing as well. And so you've got this holistic, like amazing experience of um, helping people move through life and do it in a more healed space. So I love that so much. Yes, definitely. And I'll just share with you, I knew that I wanted to do something with physical activity and, and helping the body, my body. And I actually looked it up in a book and I was like, what's physical and what could I do with exercise? physical therapy. And then I embarked on the path and went, this is going to be really hard. Yeah, it is. I don't think people understand how, um, first of all, competitive and difficult it is to find programs and um, how involved it is in terms of anatomy and the physiology and all of those things. It is not like a light, it's not a medical assistant type job. This is a very, very involved career. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get from a physical therapy to what you're doing on the other side of your business? Well, as I was becoming a physical therapist, I was also on my own physical journey and there were pieces missing. And then when I, I graduated and I was practicing for a while, I was thinking something's missing. I could do all these things for their body. I can tell them about how to help their body, but there was something else missing. And I started learning about coaching and spiritual psychology, shadow work, neuro-linguistic programming. And all of a sudden I was like, there's a whole new way of approaching the being, the person and their healing. And of course, you know, that just blew up into so many different pathways and areas for me, but it wasn't just the here, go do five exercises and you're fixed. Yes, absolutely. And I think that, I mean, one augments the other really, mm -hmm. because, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the case of my, my dad had to go through some really intense 
um, physical therapy, well, therapy in general, because he had aortic valve replacement. So he had cardiac um, therapy, but then um, 11 weeks after having aortic valve replacement and a triple bypass at the same time, he was rear-ended. Um, somebody was going 60 miles an hour and he was at a full stop. Oh. And he broke like jaws of life, like he broke his femur and his hip and like all sorts of bones. And so um, it was, you know, hospital for weeks, then rehabilitation facility, then home therapy. And, um, and it was very, very painful. And I think mm -hmm. that having that uh, added element of the emotional side mm -hmm. of going through the trauma Yes. Of, I mean, just the heart surgery itself, even though it was very life giving because he, you know, when you have all those things going on with your heart, you don't feel very good, right. but that's a very scary thing to go through. And then to go through the emotional trauma of having a car accident like that, you don't come away it, like unscathed emotionally. Um, and especially when you just went through something, you know, they completely took your chest open and all of that. And you're worried, you know, about all that. So um, I think that um, approach of really looking at the whole person, where their needs are in that moment and having that experience of addressing, like, where are your needs um, in this moment. And just for myself, even like I went on a healing journey. It was funny because um, 2019, I ended the year so hopeful, so excited. And I was like, 2020 is my year of healing and abundance. I still made it my year of healing and abundance. Um, but, and so I just was like, I'm not going to focus on anything else except for my mental health mm -hmm. and my healing. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that meant my physical health was going to be suffering because I'm kind of a um, all or nothing kind of person. <laughs> and so when I've had the years of like intense, amazing physical health, then everything else goes to this side. Um, but um, it would have been uh, interesting and probably an amazing experience to have somebody like you mm. guide me through that process of saying, like, I know that historically you've been very extreme in doing one or the other, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like, let's work together to right. find it in, in a way that feels good for you so that you can have that emotional abundance, that you can have that emotional healing but you can nourish your body at the same time. You can really feed um, physically mm -hmm. you can, um, and then have the added benefits of that too, of the transformation. And maybe mm -hmm. this is not a transformation, but it's a maintenance type thing. Yeah. But you have the extra like, okay, so now I'm not like, I'm not, I mean, for I am not a totally healed person and I am not an expert on success. But, um, you know, I'm quite a few pounds heavier than I was. And, you know, maybe I would have been able to come out of that and not have to mm -hmm. now say, okay, crap, now I need to deal with all this, right. you know? And um, so I just love that. I think that that's an amazing approach to, you know, maybe you're not doing full blown um, physical therapy for somebody who you're coaching, but mm -hmm. you have that perspective. Yeah. Like, how do we look at you as a person? Oh gosh, yes. yes. What are your needs as a person? Yes. And if you see them like veering off the path of like not addressing what their true, so I'm not talking nails and pedicures, but like <laughs> what their true self care is, then um, I know mine are like falling apart. Um, but like they're not address, like how can they possibly have a life transformation if they're not caring for themselves? Oh gosh, yes. So I, I mean, can you speak a little bit to that, like what you do in terms of working with people in in that capacity? Yes, I I love all this that you just said because as as a as a woman, a human being, I always love to be someone's person, like their helper. They're just because of my history, my my uh, pathway so far. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. I love one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and being a physical therapist. That's was part of my 
training in nature anyway. So with coaching now, I combine, like you said, all of this and all the tools that I've gained to become me. And simply for all of us here, I work on the levels of like, what are your behaviors? What are your beliefs? And how are you being? And using all of my magical skills, as I call them, I can watch how someone walks, how they breathe, how they talk, how they position themselves, how their eyes move, their break, their breath rate, whatever it is. They're, I mean, even when some people do a squat, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, let's let's talk about this <laughs> because yeah. you know, the simple things sometimes people are not even um, like aware that they're hurting their bodies. So taking that awesome, I'm so proud of myself because I've come this far to be a holistic practitioner, and I find that my clients get a much more well-rounded experience because I don't leave anything behind you know what I'm saying and if I feel like there's something out of my depth I refer them on as a true medical practitioner would do but it's quite exciting watching someone go from this to this and often my clients say I don't even recognize myself I don't even know who I am now but I do I, I've accepted all that I've become and who, who I, I needed to be to get here but it's like I'm different without even trying to be different and yeah. so it's really it's really quite magical and you know I tell my interested uh people come have an experience of just chatting with me and spending time with me and it's it, it's just like a beautiful dance uh, yeah so, i yeah. love that yeah. and i think as you feel better inside um well first of all i should say i should back up and say i think that that's i'm like sitting here going wonder what she's I wonder what she's told about me by the way that I'm sitting. You know? oh, no. <laughs> um, no, but like, um, I, I just think that that's an amazing perspective of things because, um, because we do hold ourselves a different way, mm -hmm. you know, we hold ourselves. And like one of the things that I've noticed about, well, I've, I'm starting to try to be more aware of my body in many ways, mm -hmm. but I'm a tall person and, mm -hmm. but I've always um, felt like uh, averse to, um, what is the word? Like aggression and uh, well, uh, like people fighting and that tension. Sure. And so I tend to like literally pull myself in and I've always felt that way. Like when somebody is feeling upset around me, it's painful to me. It like, I'm like very much an empath and mm -hmm. I will just like literally like, you know, like pull myself in. So I have to like, this feels very uncomfortable to me. <laughs> yes. And um, the other thing I've noticed and uh, is like uh, when I'm in the car, I'll like tense up my leg muscles. And I'm like, why do you need to be so tense? Like, just relax. You have butt warmers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> lean back. Just relax. It doesn't have to be so tense. But I'm like, if I'm not aware of that, right. these are things that are like little um, tips to myself. Like, what are, what are you thinking right now? Right. What are you thinking that's causing you to tense your body up? What are you thinking that's causing you to um, feel this way and, um, and how does that affect the whole of who you are in this moment for this whole day or for, and then how do you let that whole day bleed into this whole week? And then how do you let that whole week bleed into this whole month? And so I, I mean, like, it seems so simple. I mean, it's not like uh, simplistic that I'm doing this, but I'm actually damaging my body. And then now, like I said, this feels uncomfortable, but this is a place of 2021. My, my phrase was shoulders back, heart out. Because oh. I wanted to like be empowered. And so when I felt myself doing this, I'm like, nope, shoulders back, heart out, like serve like for my heart. But how do I serve from my heart if I'm like this? Right, right. You know, and so it was just a like, okay, this is uncomfortable, but it's what I want. I want to project confidence and I want to be able to serve. And if my heart is hidden and I'm collapsing in myself, I can't possibly do that. And so, um, yeah, I think you're right in terms of like, here are these emotional things that affect our physicality um, in a very real way. As, as you were saying that, I mean, 
kudos to you celebrating you because now that I've met you, I'm like, you are so confident. Your heart's out. You're so giving and so flipping funny too. <laughs> <laughs> and down to earth. Um, but you remind me of a time which really signaled why I needed to dive deeper into the person, the holistic person. I remember I was massaging this fella's knee area and he started crying about memories from his grandmother. And I was like, oh, goodness, you know, I just touched your knee, for goodness sakes. And, and it just opened up a whole new investigation that we hadn't learned in our preparation because, you know, I was like, diagnose, treat prognosticate all this like serious stuff and now that i've slid out to the woo woo side of things going yes no it's not just about your uh squats and your lunges anymore yes. <laughs> so but yes yes <laughs> well you know my it's it it's not like ha ha funny but it's a, just an interesting story and that is um unfortunately my mother-in-law passed at the age of 44 which is like oh, devastating God. because i'm 43 and i'll be 44 this year but um my husband was the only boy for a really long time. He has five sisters and he's the second in line. So he has a sister, him and four sisters. And then he does have brothers on the tail end. And um, so he was like mama's boy. You know what I mean? Oh. Like mama's boy. And she used to do this thing where she would let him put his head in her lap and she would scratch his scalp. You know what I mean? Like sometimes a good scalp scratch just feels so good. And um, so like every once in a while, he's like, can you just scratch my head? And then he's like, what? Like recently he's just said, it just reminds me of my mom. You know what I mean? Like, and so I, like, here's something like physical. That's just mm -hmm. like, like for me, it's just like, that's part of why I love getting my hair done is like the shampoo oh. and like the head scratch just feels so good. But it's also this emotional process mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, it can take you back to these things. Yes. So I think about that, like what you were saying about rubbing that man's knee is like, sometimes just the, um, and God bless massage therapists, seriously, because the trauma that the body holds and the release, I mean, I have cried at least twice in my life and I've had a lot of massages. I've cried in massage therapy. And I do think it's because we release these things, you know, these things that we've held in our body right, for so long. And so, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I just love, I mean, I could probably talk forever about that because I think that it's so important to mm -hmm recognize that um uh, like the book says the body keeps score you know what i mean like definitely and so the fact that you're helping people um mm -hmm. say okay what is your body keeping score of oh, what, gosh. You know, what are you what are you you know what what are we needing to address so that you can fully heal for sure and 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 so many layers of a person, which I love the deep work, the deeper, the better. And, you know, within my scope of practice, of course, because it, it, the slightest thing that a client will say, I'm like, okay, let's break that down. There's yeah. like 35 years of layers under the words that you just spoke. Yes. And the fact that you're holding your breath or ducking down when you say these things, what's the story behind that? And right. And I could go on for hours too. I know. Well, my friend who's also actually in the in the advance that we are both in, um, Gabriella Manchula, she has the like seven layers of why, which I know is like a um, you know, like a technique, but yes. she does it and sometimes because she's my business coach too, and sometimes it's so obnoxious. Yeah. Like, can we just start that? Can we just stop at like <laughs> why number three? But the concept is you say, wow, that's really interesting. Why do you feel that way? Oh yeah. And then you answer the question. They're like, okay, but why, you know, like, and you just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's because I played with GI Joes when I was five, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Yep. Yep. And, yep. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's what it kind of reminds me of is like, breaking it down and saying like, okay, talk to me about that. Like you, I noticed that you moved your shoulder, you know, like all that kind of stuff. I just think that's like, so cool. Um, for you in your journey, take me back to when you were younger, whether that be, um, young adulthood or earlier than that, 
what did you think success and like ultimate achievement meant to you back then? What did that feel like? Or what did you think that was going to be? Well, I'll just, I'll just go back to the general theme of before I was 12, playing with my Barbies with my sister, um, <laughs> going on vacations, having candy at my uncle's store, um, very, very simple things, um, just to be loved and feel safe and be fed um, yeah. just from the basic things. But yeah, I, I was a very simple, easy to please, so to speak, child that was like, Hello, I want the easy things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What about in your teen years? How did that develop for you? Then I wanted to be like superstar tennis player. And then I wanted to be a uh, Miss Straight A student. And I wanted a Honda Prelude. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when I finally got my job. I, I got a red Honda Prelude sports car that I was so proud of because I paid for it with all my own money. Nice. And I worked for myself to do like worked in physical therapy and all sorts of jobs to do that. So that was success to me. And then I was a big fan of traveling like, Oh, and going to concerts. Like I look back and I think I have been to so many concerts. No wonder why I can't hear for shit. <laughs> <laughs> but what those things are really cool because you can't, I mean, uh, traveling and doing those types of things like concerts and whatnot, like you can't replicate that, you know, like you, if you missed that, that was like an opportunity that you would have, I mean, uh, you, you would have never been able to replicate. Maybe that concert would come back around, but not the same. It's, I mean, I know where you live and, and I know, you know, I love Pearl Jam when it's like a full body experience being at one of their shows and, and many of the other bands that I follow, like I jump into it holistically and like, you know, Duran Duran's over here and George Michael's over here and Madonna, yes. like, they're all part of my upbringing. And that's what I know to be true for a lot of the people I work with and talk to. So it's so exciting and then so painful at times and so energy freeing when I work with my clients. Yeah. I always say that my life has like a soundtrack to it and um, like it's very eclectic because 12 and under is a lot of like Jethro Tull and um, uh Lou Rawls and Christine Lavin and like my dad listened like listened to so many like uh oh um Hall and Oates and um Kenny Loggins he listened to so many different types of music because my dad is a musician oh wow and yeah. so and he's like a bluegrass musician so we listened to a lot of bluegrass music we would go to bluegrass festivals he was also a gospel musician and so we would like actually perform uh, they have a big festival here in Seattle every year called the Folklife Festival. And um, it's right at the Space Needle, like underneath the Space Needle. And we would perform with my dad. Mm -hmm. And so like I have that's like the if I hear like certain songs will pop on and I'll be like or I'll, um, you know, like sometimes something will happen and I'll be like so close get so far away you know like i'll just like it'll pop into my brain and then when i was a teenager um like tracy chapman and i was obsessed with selena quintanilla so i would listen to a lot of her stuff and um like some of the pop music and some of the r b and a little bit of alternative and like you know just like 90s music is just like you know, gratefully, I have passed that on to my eldest. So we yes. get in the car and we get along just fine because yes. that's like all she wants to listen to is 90s music. Mm -hmm. But um, but then, you know, as things mature, you know, other types of music have emerged. But music lyrics, I really resonate with these um, songwriters and how mm -hmm. they have, um, you know, come through with these ways to express life. Right. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think it's so um, valuable to pay attention to mm -hmm. that part of, of life and culture, because that has been very healing for me too, 
in terms of, uh, you know, well, even like success, like right now my book campaign is going on and I'm playing with reels, you know, like on Instagram and I'm like, what song goes with how I feel today? And then I found one by Mary J. Blige that I never heard that was like amazing. And it was called amazing. And I was like, oh yeah, this is going on there, you know? So that kind of stuff is like, it's relevant to, um, because that's my celebration yes. is like how I, that's success. That's celebration achievement is like, okay, yeah, today I got, you know, this many people who pre-ordered my book. And then I'm like, I got to do something that like pumps me up and makes me feel good. So yes. that's awesome. Um, so taking it forward to current day, um, you're, in this duality of physical therapy and transformational coaching in health and all of those things, what does success look like for you right now in, in life? Feeling good. Yes. Alive and having freedom to be me and speak my voice and share my stories and really use my everything to help other women in the similar situations that I've been in so that they can feel joy, they can feel free. So um, being able to do that for them and then spending heaps of time with my husband and my son and my siblings and my fur babies. Like I I'm I'm really simple. Like I said before, like I just like the basic things. I want to feel good. I'd like an awesome cup of coffee. Yes. Um, but, but you belong I mean, in Seattle. What are you doing? I, <laughs> I mean, when You're we were like there, coffee yeah. mecca. <laughs> no, my, actually, I'll just jump in. When we were there to see Pearl Jam, my son went, walked into that ginormous Starbucks. The, yes. The big he fell in love. Now he works for Starbucks here. And oh. I was like, oh. but I just like being able to keep traveling, having the money, the time, yes. and um, just more memories, creating more memories. Like, you know, I'm not, you know, no pedicure, manicure gal, no, like I'm low maintenance, but we just value our lives. And I'm not, I, I married someone from New Zealand and my son was born in Australia. So we overcame a lot to stay together and be together in one household. So any chance we can get to just have more times together is successful to me. And yes, you know, meeting I amazing know. women like you. I know. Well, you know, that's funny too, because my, um, well, my girls were born, all born here, but my husband is from Mexico and we also mm-hmm. had um, that same, I mean, he was born in Mexico, came as a teenager, everything. And we had the same, um, the yeah, lady. thank you. Speaking of, you can come say hi, <laughs> come say hi. I'm live, but hi. no, come say hi. Oh. I just literally said, this is my husband, Ismael, come put your hand <laughs> And he's bringing me coffee because. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. The rest. So yeah. she gets a present every morning. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we had to, I mean, immigration is such a, challenging thing to navigate. And so, you know, here we had two small children and um, we're navigating that and thinking like, do we need to move back to Mexico? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, like my family, I'm very close to my family. So I don't even know how he did it to come here. He has eight siblings, you know, and then we also had to navigate where he had a worker's visa and he couldn't leave the country and his mom was dying, you know, like, and gratefully he was able to, we were able to get things put together before she passed and stuff. But, um, you know, and that is a major success being able to be with our loved ones in the most pivotal parts of their life. Um, and, uh, so I feel you on that. And on the note, the side tangent of fur babies, I've been trying to do, reels and i get like almost nothing like just very little like maybe 50 to 80 views i put um it was my boston terriers uh birthday this week so i put a reel of me like saying phoebe like how does it feel to be five do you feel like <laughs> your age do you feel like you're past your prime like and then at the very end her little ears like she's just like looking at me the very end her ears like ding, and that was the, end of the, the reel 
I got 1,500 views <laughs> on the reel. I'm like, so basically me not in the reel is the ticket to getting views. I know. I know. It's crazy. Oh. It's hilarious. Well, before I ask the last question, I skipped something that's very important. And that is. Tell me about an event or, um, you know, something that happened in terms of adversity for you that you overcame that really changed things and like really brought you to where you are today, where this family time and this travel and this being free um, is now the version of success more than the prelude. Um, <laughs> but like, what was it that turned that for you? It I, I I grew up in a family of folks that were not very healthy, and I watched many of them pass away too soon and suffer a lot of issues and illnesses. And unfortunately, my mother was one of them. And I just was like, there's more to life than going to the nine to five, you know, nothing wrong with that. But like, I watched my relatives like just grind themselves down do all these things and they were not happy. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to grind myself down and struggle like that right. with something out in the future that they never were able to achieve because they're no longer here. So I'm like, you know, I use bigger F terms right now. It's just because I'm so oh, you can. this is awkward friendly. You're good. Yeah. I'm like, fuck that way of life. I yeah. want to be free of the chains and go out and have fun and enjoy it and not put it off until yes. I got the golden, whatever it was that my relatives were aiming for. I'm like, no, I'm going to live that now. Yes. And, and I, I thank God and the universe for meeting a husband that's on the same path. Yeah. He's like, yeah. If a little bit of good, a little bit is good. A lot must be better. You know, like, let's yes. do it. Yeah. That, <laughs> so, this guy, I'm telling you, um, I'm like a hermit. And I love to travel, but I'm always worried about like the money and like all of those things or like missing work or like coming back to um, having just a shit show or all of those types of things. And he's like, stop worrying about the money. Like if we charge it, we charge it. You know, like we he works with he's always worked with a lot of elder gentlemen because he worked in the shipyards. Mm -hmm. And now he works at the landfill as a, as a uh, metal fabricator and everyone is older and retiring and all this kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. So they like impart a lot of wisdom. Yes. yes. They're like, stop waiting, mm -hmm. stop waiting. And he had one um, just adorable guy uh, that he worked with and they made all, he and his wife were like the cutest couple. They made all these plans. And then he was like right before retirement and she passed. And he's like, now I have no one to do all these things with. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that's, this one's like, that's not going to be us. We're going to do it. We're going to do the things. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't get to do all the things. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do the things, you know, like we're going to try our best to live our life, give experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, our elder daughters got to go to Mexico almost every two, like we basically went every two years and stayed with family they are fully a part of his family. You know, um, it's we've slowed down a little bit in going to Mexico with our youngest because we've started branching out and making memories as like the three of us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, but he always says, if it wasn't for me, she'd never go anywhere. And if it wasn't for her, I'd be dirt poor. So because <laughs> he would just spend all his money, you know, his, his like favorite phrase is el, din el dinero se viene se va, which means the money, it comes and it goes like just it's just money. Like mm -hmm. it's just going to come and just goes like, just let it like, and I always tell him like, contigo se va, se va, se va. Like with you, it just goes and goes and goes. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not coming. It's just going. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's a, such an important message that you were able to learn in terms of success of just like not wasting time. Mm -hmm. And not wasting life and just taking advantage of, um, I'm, you can come and say hi if you want. I'm on a live stream, but it's, it's all good. It's fine. Come say hi. Uh, no. <laughs> My daughter doesn't want to say hi. I was going to say, you better bring the fur baby on. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Bring Phoebe. Um, 
but uh but yeah i think that is something that i've had to learn for myself because uh you know i i tend to have a lack mentality and um and i'm learning my way out of that because yes. I would, I would literally sit at home and work myself to death and never, like, I actually love working. So it brings me mm -hmm. joy, but I wouldn't go and experience life. Mm -hmm. And what if it was like, I mean, we just went to Reno and it was kind of crappy. Oh, like, but you know what? Like we went to Reno and it was kind of crappy. Like we, we tried something and it, yeah. you know, like, and it was, it was fine. You know what I mean? Like, um, and now we know like Reno all set, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, and, um, which actually that's not true. We have a free, I have a timeshare and we have a free trip and oh. we're going back because it's free. Okay. Um, we're going to a different place. So yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, I think that embracing life and mm -hmm. not, um, letting it pass us by because like we talked about a day goes into a week and two week goes into a month and then you know we let it go and we let it go and um, it, it can just be a tragedy if we let it go without trying to make memories during that time yes so, yes yes yeah. yes <laughs> I know Denise tell me what the best, like in terms of advice or mantra or something that you've really embraced that somebody's told you or you've picked up that has really made a difference for you um, in your life. Tell me about that. Oh my gosh. Can I share three? You can do three? <laughs> of course. Well, one of the original ones that kept me going with my career as a physical therapist, my beloved anatomy teacher. He used to say the answers are on your body. Just look down. And it was so true because it gave me such great skill and insight into myself and my patients and now clients. Yes. Um, and then a, a little crazy side note, when I was off doing my internships in uh, Orlando, um, Mike Dooley, the, the, the universe fellow, I, I forget his whole title, but he had a t-shirt shop and I saw this t-shirt, normal is boring. <laughs> Yes. And I just thought, you know what? I was I was on that track, like like a lot of the people I grew up with, to be like in the box and normal yes. and fit in. And when I saw that t-shirt, I was like, that, that's me. Yeah. I am not, I do not want to be boring at all and it doesn't fly with me. So and then the other t-shirt I bought was Seize the Day. And yeah. it's it's I mean, yeah, like that's I, I just live it and and do it. And if I get pissed off if something doesn't allow me to seize my damn days. <laughs> so, right. I but, know. Yeah. And I now at this stage of my life, am really proud of not being normal. Like, it's cool. And, and having worked with so many patients of so many diseases, illnesses, disabilities, categories, whatever, everybody's beautiful. Everybody's got their own yes. way of doing their life and that's okay. Yes. It's like, I feel like that is, my uh, 12 year old is going on 45 and you know, we have conversations about this and we were talking about like normal people are weirdos. Like they're the weirdos. Like if you are trying to be normal, that's weird. Like why wouldn't you want to be who you are? Like, and I don't, I mean, like, I don't know if I could have ever possibly even been that way. Believe it or not, I was quite shy as a child. I know that's hard to believe, but mm -hmm. um, I like I couldn't be anything but who I am in terms of out of the box and, you know, out there and just loving and interested in people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, I think I think that's it. Like, that's the new T-shirt is like normal people are the weirdos. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, because if you if you don't embrace who you are, then um, you're not actually being you're you're actually being a false fake person and if you're embracing who you are we're all unique and beautiful and you know and so that there's no normal there is no normal because we are all special mm -hmm. and um you know special snowflakes that's what uh, i think about myself but um but yeah i think that's that's so true and seizing the day is you know 
you have to like you mm -hmm. even on the days you don't feel like it even this morning i felt i was just having such a slow start to this morning and i was feeling i don't know like just like how do i get myself going and I, mm -hmm. there's a, like a meditation song that I love. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to listen to it while I write my list of what I need to do today. And then I was like, no, I actually need to close my eyes and listen to this. Mm -hmm. And I just took, it's like, it's a little long. It's like maybe six or seven minutes long, but I was like, I'm just going to take this six or seven minutes for myself. And I'm just going to listen and I'm not going to try to figure out anything or even stop my brain. I'm just going to let whatever happens happen and just like take a second. Yes. And um, and then I listened to it again and I wrote my list mm -hmm. of my things and it changed everything. Yeah. I think that it can, you know, we have to do those types of things because that was the beginning of my day. Yeah. You know? Yes. Like that, that was how I said, like, I'm important enough to say I'm feeling overwhelmed because mm -hmm. I'm tired mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, like, I'm just like foggy and I have a lot to do today. So what can I do in this moment that yes, I'm giving up a couple minutes of my time that I need, I need to like, <laughs> but also that six or seven minutes would have been completely ineffective. Right. Yes. And Yay. now I'm like raring because I've got my Denise time in. So <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. I just love you. <laughs> I love you too. Well, um, we are going to put Denise's contact information in the show notes. I encourage and ask you to please reach out to her if you have any questions, if you'd like to work with her, want more information, um, or if you just want to connect with her because she's just a badass soul and you, you know, like, you know, especially if you're a business owner, she's an amazing person to just connect and be encouraged. And, um, you know, she's just awesome. I just love you. I think you're awesome. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming along this fun journey with us. Uh, this is the Successful as Fuck show. I am your host, Raya Gonzalez. We hope to see you.